Sketch a graph of the polar equation r equals 4 sine theta plus 2. Determine the interval of theta that corresponds to the inner loop. Try to work this one out for yourself. You have enough information and it's really about gaining experience. Remember that practicing doing these calculations on your own really helps you to do better. <clears throat> All right, so r equals 4 sine theta plus 2. What are we going to do with this? Well, once again, first of all, we're going to look at our values. Uh, there's nothing in here changing the speed of the angle, so we can just use the same key values that we've been using. Now, the value of r, we're going to have to actually do the calculation a little more carefully here. So when theta is equal to 0, sine theta is 0, so this becomes just 4 times 0 plus 2, which is 2. Uh, from here, we can uh, when you use pi over 2, sine theta is 1, 4 times 1 plus 2 is 6. At pi, sine of theta is 0, so that's 0 plus 2, it's going to be 2. Here we're going to have, uh, for 3 pi over 2, that's a negative 1, that's going to go to negative 2, and back to 2 again. If we draw, this, draw the graph, we're going to put the little dotted line where the midline is at height 2. So here is... 6, uh, it should be a little bit higher, but it's kind of squeezed in here, negative 2. So you go from 0 up to 6, and that's at pi over 2. Here's pi, here's 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. So you go 6, and then up to 6, down to 2, down to negative 2, back up to 2. So this graph here is a little bit sloppy looking. Um, again, the 6 is a little bit lower because I didn't give myself enough room there, but that's okay. The, what we care about is the overall shape and the starting point and ending points. <clears throat> so we're going to convert this thing into a polar graph. 0, 1, 2, 3. And 3 pi over 2. Our first point, theta is equal to 0, r equals 2. It's going to be right about here. Our second point, theta equals pi over 2, r equals 6. That's going to be up here somewhere. The next point, theta is pi, r is 2. That's over here. So the next point, 3 pi over 2, but it's going to be a negative 2. It's going to be up here. And then we have 2 pi, which is also over here, radius 2 again. Now, just again, by, if you try to look at these points and try to connect them directly, if you try to connect them with straight lines, you're going to get some sort of shape that looks, um, let's see, 0, 2, pi over 2, 6, so over here, up there, and back down again. It's not going to give you a good sense of what the actual shape is. So once again, we're going to use some construction lines. When r is equal to, sorry, when theta is equal to 0, or r is equal to 2. So you have a circle of radius 2 here. And then when you get to the pi over 6, or pi over 2, we have a radius of 6. So I'll sketch that circle out here. The radius is going to increase from 2 out to 6 as we keep going. So here's 2, so a little bit bigger. Here's 2, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. It's going to go out to there. Coming back in on this part, it's going to go from 6 down back to 2 again. So I'm going to extend this circle of radius 6, not like that. Here's a circle of radius 2. Uh, it's a little bit flat, but that's okay. Again, these are just sketches. And so we're wide out here, getting smaller, 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 approaching down to radius 2. So this part looks kind of like this. And now here's where something interesting is going to happen. Between pi and 3 pi over 2, we're going to go from a positive value to a negative value. So <clears throat> the positive 2 circle goes around like this, but we're going to end up with a negative 2. And so what we have to do is we have to 
Uh, whoops. Yeah. <clears throat> so, somewhere in the middle, and I don't know exactly where, it's going to cross over and give us a zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do part of it on this side, here and here. And the next one will be on the opposite side. So this, this angle right here, but we're on the negative side, will be over on this spot instead. And so it's going to have a shape that kind of goes around and up like this. And for the last part, we're going to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. We're starting at negative 2. <clears throat> it's going to come back to 0. And then it's going to extend out back to 2. It's going to come around, give a shape like that. So when the problem asks us to determine the part, the interval of theta that corresponds to the inner loop, we had no idea what that was until after we graphed it. Now we can see the inner loop is this part. That inner loop corresponds to this negative piece right here because that's where it crosses over 0, which means it sort of goes inside itself and comes out again. And so we need to figure out that part of it. <clears throat> so how are we going to do that? Where does that inner loop happen? It happens where this formula, where this r value is equal to 0. So we need to find those two points. So 0 equals 4 sine theta plus 2. From here, we do algebra like we've done algebra before. I'm going to skip several steps here. Sine theta is equal to negative 1 half. Subtract 2, divide both sides by 4. Sine theta equals negative 1 half. Well, think about the unit circle. Sine corresponds to the y coordinate. So we're down here. We're in quadrants 3 and 4. And so we're going to have one angle here. One angle here, incidentally, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. So between pi and 3 pi over 2 is quadrant 3. Between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi is quadrant 4. So those are the two things we're looking at. The reference angle, um, sine of what acute angle gives us uh, 1 half. Sine is the y coordinate, so we're going to get uh, pi over 6 for this. And so this is going to be pi over 6, and that's going to be pi over 6. And so the two solutions that we're looking at is theta is equal pi plus pi over 6. That's when we first go into it. When we come out of it, theta is going to be 2 pi minus pi over 6. And so for this one, we'll have 7 pi over 6. And for this one, we'll have 11 pi over 6. So this inner loop corresponds to the angles of whoops, 7 pi over 6 is less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to 11 pi over 6. So this little chunk right here, which corresponds to this inner loop right here, happens between 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Sketch a graph of the polar equation r equals cosine of 3 theta. What interval of theta describes one loop of the graph? Again, try it yourself first. All right, so r equals cosine of 3 theta. Now you might remember that if we have a cosine of 3 theta, the cosine term is vibrating three times as fast as it normally does. And so if we tried to use the values of 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, we would be missing a whole lot of the information. So we have to break that down so that it goes three times faster. So in this case, uh, it turns out that we could do that and we could write that all out. I'm actually going to jump straight to the graph because this is one that we can actually graph relatively easily. So our theta value goes this way and our r value goes this way. So cosine, the cosine function starts at 1, dips down to 0, and goes back up to 1 again. That's the basic shape. Uh, normally this happens over an interval of 2 pi, but because we're doing it three times as fast, that's going to happen at an interval of 2 pi over 3. And from this, knowing that this is the interval from 0 to 2 pi over 3, uh, we can now break this down into uh, four equal parts. So if we divide this by 4, this could be 2 pi over 12. So it's going to be uh, pi over 6. So pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, and that's 4 pi over 6. Of course, these things reduce, but I'm writing it this way. Um, just for emphasis, because what this is telling us is that every pi over 6, something interesting happens. We either go from 1 down to 0, 0 down to negative 1, or back up again. And so we could actually, if we wanted to, finish this whole graph 
by continuing to mark off pi over 6. Now, I don't know how much of this graph we're going to need at this point. So we're going to start graphing the polar graph. And if I need to extend this further, then I'll extend this further. Uh, sometimes you just don't know in advance and you just have to work it out. And that's okay. So here we go. <clears throat> so let's make that a little bit smaller. So there's radius 1. So 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Now these angles here correspond to the radians just like we've done the entire semester. So now what this is saying is that we have to now increase the number of subdivisions. So specifically, we need to go by pi over 6. So this pi over 2 is right here. So we need three of them. So 1. So this is pi over 6. This is 2 pi over 6. That was 3 pi over 6. 4 pi over 6. Whoops. 5 pi over 6, and so on. Again, I'll fill this out as I go, and that one's sloppy. It just happens that way. Okay, so between 0 and pi over 6, so that's this one and this one, we start off at a radius of 1, and it shrinks down to a radius of 0. So because of the amount of space, I'm only going to draw one intermediate line in here. So a circle of radius 1, I'll go ahead and sketch that part. All right, so circle of radius 1. Let's actually go ahead and go all the way around here because we're going to use it several times. <clears throat> so between 0 and pi over 6, it goes from 1 down to 0, so maybe about the halfway point right around there, and then down to 0. So now we're at pi over 6. Between pi over 6 and 2 pi over 6, we're going to be in the negative value, so pi over 6, I'm going to extend that one. 2 pi over 6, I'm going to extend that one. So when we're between pi over 6 and 2 pi over 6, but in the negative, we're over here. And so I'll draw one intermediate value here, go from 0 out to 1 with an intermediate value here. So we could actually start sketching this a little bit. Between 2 pi over 6 and 3 pi over 6, also known as pi over 2, we have the same thing. So we're over here but we're negative, so we're over here. Draw an intermediate line about halfway down. Connect them. Between 3 pi over 6 and 4 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6 and 4 pi over 6, we're back in the positive side, so we're on the same side as this. Start at 0, work our way out to 1. And so we get this shape. Now from this, we can hopefully start to see a pattern developing. Um, and this is where your experience and intuition are going to kick in and really help you out. So you notice that's going from 1 down to 0 to negative 1 to 0 to 1. This is going to go back down to 0. By this point, you hopefully don't need to keep on sketching these intermediate lines. But if you do, you do. Uh, we're going to take this and we're going to sort of curl it around. And it's going to get 0 by the time it gets to 5 pi over 6. So here's 5 pi over 6. That's going to go down to here. And then between 5 pi over 6 and the next one, which is 6 pi over 6, it's going to go about this way. When it's at 6 pi over 6, the radius is negative 1. Pi is facing this way, but with the angle pi going in negative 1, that will take you to here. And you can see that we're back at where we started, and so this gives us a complete figure. Now the question asks us to give an interval that describes one loop of this graph. So you can see here we have three different loops. We only want one loop. And here's where um, <clears throat> we can we have some choice. We can pick this loop. We can pick this loop. We can pick this loop. It doesn't matter which one. Um, I'm actually going to talk about all these loops just to be sure that uh, we have enough information about what's going on. So this part of the graph here came from uh, between that was between five pi over six and pi. So it came from this part right here. Uh, unfortunately. That does not actually correspond well with our initial points over here. So what we're going to do is take a step back and look at this. If we go backwards, we'll actually trace along the same part here. Uh, same logic and everything, just working it out. This, let's see, let's do some colors here. Whoops. This part right here, which I'm going to shade in blue, matches this part right here. You can see that it starts at 0, goes out to 1, goes back to 0. That's tracing along this part right here. 
If you wanted to do this part right here, uh, let's shade that in red. That corresponded to this piece right here. This last one right here that's left uncolored is going to be this one right here. And so you have multiple choices for what you want to do. So if you wanted the blue part, you would say, let's see, we're all each of these steps is pi over 6, so this would be a negative pi over 6, less than or equal theta, less than or equal pi over 6. That would be for the blue one. If you wanted the red one, that would be from here to here, so pi over 6, less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to 3 pi over 6. Let's see. And this last loop up here comes from over here. And so that would be 3 pi over 6 to, let's see, it gets back down to zero, 5 pi over 6. So each one of these intervals creates a different loop, just depending on which one you're looking at.